because of the fact that America's financial education, well, you obviously didn't learn it in high school. You actually have to, instead of the school of, um, uh, you know, of high school, you learn it in Fort Knox or, or Hard Knox, uh, so to speak. Uh, you basically learn because you've sacrificed your almighty dollars and have gotten nothing in return. The, the bigger problem we're having is that the lack of education, lack of financial education in this country has basically allowed the lending community to prey on the interests of these people. And so they get these famous movie stars on that look trusting and they recommend these things and recommend these. Products. So you're saying it's a bad idea. Uh, if it was my situation, I was facing retirement. I sure would be looking at another income stream. I could think of a lot of other things to invest. Sure, in. Sure, but let's say let's more. say your cancer's in remission. You think you're going to be dead in five years? Do the re you know reverse mortgage, go to the Caribbean, have a good time. Part of the problem is though your estate starts to diminish, and pretty soon by the time all this is said and done, your your estate is left with nothing. I mean that's that's the but I mean yeah, if you don't want to give your kids the money though, blow it. I mean. It sounds bad. I'm not saying reverse mortgages are good. I don't know much about them. I'm just saying, are they always bad in your view? I generally tend to shy away from them, but you know, people have the reasons for for doing it. And I always tell them, look, if you're going to do a reverse mortgage, best thing to do is consult with a financial professional. Get your, your well, yeah. Why not your, your sell the nicer house and move into a smaller apartment in a retirement community instead of getting the reverse mortgage? My mom did that very thing. She did the very same thing. She took her. Um, all the money that she had, she sold her house. And of course, you know, her being in Florida, she took a nosedive on that house and lost $100,000 when she sold it. And so she took that money and put it into annuities and what she considered safe investments and left it there. And so then she moved into an apartment. And that way, you know, when it's time uh, to settle the estate, everything is very easy and not complicated. Now, the average person could have said, you know, the reverse mortgage sounds good because I want to leave something to my kids. Well, the downside of the reverse mortgage is the fact that it depletes the estate. So if the intent was to leave them something, well, don't you think it would be better just to try to figure out a way to create an income stream to pay off the mortgage or figure out a way to um, you know, rent the house out and move into an apartment so somebody else can pay that mortgage? Because that's what a lot of people do when they can't afford the house. They rent it to somebody else and somebody else makes the mortgage payment. And then they move into an apartment, which is cheaper, that they can live on in their fixed. All right, great analysis. Uh, I think that answered his question. We're going to go to break. Uh, two more segments. The next one's long. We're going to go to Mike, Nathan, Sandy, Truth Warrior. Actually, Truth Warrior is right after Mike when we come back. Again, I'm Alex Jones. Our guest is Dave Krieger. The book is Clouded Titles. It is amazing. One of you were not able legally to sell your home. Over 70 million American homes may be affected this book breaks it down, available at InfoWarsShop.com at the lowest price you're going to find in the known universe. We'll be right back. Stay with us. I'm Alex Jones. Dave Krieger is our guest for two more segments here on this live Friday edition. I'm Alex Jones. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, if you just tuned in, there is a mega fraud. I've talked about it a decade ago. People thought it was a conspiracy theory, how they didn't have the real... Uh, notes, they were engaged in fraud, they were selling into derivatives, uh, these mortgages over and over again, the chain of custody wasn't filed, the deeds weren't filed properly, uh, none of it was being carried out correctly. Well, now, you know, the last three or four years, that's been big news. It's continuing. And they're not just taking people who get behind on their mortgage. You know, you pay 24 years, you get behind, one month, they take it the last year. They're taking houses that are paid for. And we've gone over a lot of examples of that. And, or, or people think their house is paid off, but somebody bought it down the you know line and just comes and says it's mine. And the courts take it, unless you know what you're doing. That's where the book Clouded Titles that we do sell at InfoWarsShop.com, massively discounted. Uh, it's uh, normally $49.95. It's $39.95, and you get a free citizen roll book uh, and bumper stickers with it. But the point is it's well worth it uh, and because it breaks down what real lawyers and others are doing to win and it's the latest. This just came out, this latest edition. Okay, uh, I want to go back to the phone calls here. Let's go to Mike and then Truth Warrior and others. Mike in Wyoming, you're on the air with Dave Krieger. Go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, uh, Dave, uh, there's another 500-pound gorilla out there that's clouding title. That's the IRS. I was in a urinating contest with him for many years, and I, I finally had to go through bankruptcy to get him off my back, but I, I'm still saddled with a, a, a big a lien on my house that uh, my bankruptcy attorney says I'm just, I'm stuck with it. There's nothing they can, nothing they can do about it, but 
what the IRS does is uh, that they don't go through the normal procedure that's that anyone else would have to go through to file a lien with the county recorder. The recorder just says, "Well, I, we just file anything as long as the the appropriate fee is paid." They, they, there's no certification uh, to be specific. Is that uh, even a mechanics cert- lien? No, it, it, they have to certify that the uh, you know that the information in there is is accurate, and they don't do that. It's it's robo signed by someone who doesn't even exist. Yeah, no, uh, I'm familiar with that. And by the way, this is the big scandal you saw, uh, uh, Dave. This big breaking news just had a caveat, and I'm going to get the article out soon. For three years, I've been talking to a senior IRS person, and then for over a year or another. But in the last few months are like, listen, there's going to be a big thing. Uh, we're told to give people fake, uh, well, I mean, they're not fake, but they really are fake under wrong names, these tax IDs. Then they can then attach those to social security numbers that aren't even the same. And government, Texas Comptroller, others have released millions of them. Foreign governments are involved, you name it. It's shutting down the IRS, but it's worse. When the illegals do stuff in your name or whatever, the IRS, and there's this identity fraud involved, will come and still take your account or put liens on you, and they're told it doesn't matter, just use it to take their money. And the IRS is finally in a mutiny. You know, the biggest center in the country is here in Austin. They are finally just going, This we can't do this. Uh, and they're taking retirees, homes, you name it. I mean, it is. So, so this breaking news you see is really a whitewash is what I'm saying. Uh, but uh, what do you say to that, Mike? Well, uh, my question is, how isn't there a way? Uh, uh, can I do a quiet title action? Uh, I couldn't get any attorney to to touch it uh, locally here. Is this yeah, how do you out? challenge the fact that it's a robo signed fraud? Well, you know, again, you're dealing UCC largely in part deals from my understanding in Article Nine. Uh, which is basically possession is nine tenths of the law, and if they can go in and seize whatever's in your bank account, and I, I know that, judging from what I've talked to attorneys about, Mike, on these on these issues, that they're telling me that you know certain bankruptcy debts are dischargeable, uh, or IRS liens rather are dischargeable in bankruptcy if they're older than three years. Um, my CPA even confirmed that. But you know the fact of the matter is, is that you know once liens are there. Um, there, there are certain procedures that you need to find uh, a real estate attorney that understands yeah. that stuff that, that can go in. Yeah, and there are leave. people that aren't cowards that are willing to go up against go, the IRS. There are attorneys that will go and and challenge the existing liens on there, especially if a lien has been discharged in bankruptcy and it still is you know, showing on your on your chain. So what fine. saved you? Your, your, your homesteads saved you from their clutches? Well, it's the, the, uh, the, the, the bankruptcy itself uh, stops any... Uh, collection activity, but but that doesn't uh, that doesn't make the lien just. Go By the away. way, Mike is a doctor, and he and he hadn't called in a few years. And but you've been listening over a decade, haven't you, Mike? Oh yeah, yeah, since the early days. I recognize your voice. How you doing? Oh, not 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 too bad. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know the old saying that uh, a fish uh, rots from the head down. Uh, our administration here at, at uh, my little hospital seems to have the same infection that the that the feds have. That uh, they can just do pretty much whatever they want, and uh, this uh, this mentality seems to be uh, uh, permeating our entire society. Yeah, the more Americans go along to orders, the tyrants will gravitate to the positions. Thomas Jefferson said, "The tyranny, the level of tyranny you will live under, is the exact point you will put up with," and and that's the bad prognosis, Doc, as you know. But I tell you, you've been listening. It's got to be 12, 13 years. Has it not all come true like we said? I mean, it's, it's, we're just following the, the signpost right into hell here. I mean, it's, it's, we're, we're getting pretty close to the mouth of the furnace now. Yeah, well, like you, I've, I've known for a long time what was going on. I just, uh, I'm old enough that I thought, well, this, you know, this is something that the next generation is going to have to deal with. And I, I, I never dreamed that, uh, you know, at uh, fast approaching 60 years of age, I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to be the one who has to deal with it. Well, look out, probably- because my IRS source said 70 plus percent of the audits and seizures they're doing, they've been told target retirees, and they've changed the laws retroactively to now try to get your money and say, oh, you took t- 200000 out the last couple of years out of your retirement. Uh, there's penalties and interest. You owe us a million. And it's not even a law. It's just total criminality. Good to hear from you. Any other comments on that? I'm good there. Amazing info. Uh, let's talk to Nathan in Minnesota. You're on the air with our guest. Hi there. Uh, thanks for having me on. I'm actually a friend of Dan Fights, who's been on your show before. Yeah, good guy. I'm an attorney here in Minnesota. 
And I, I, I practice in the area of bankruptcy, and then I, I've studied this issue. I've had something, uh, some knowledge and exposure to this. Just a couple things I wanted to say. Um, in Minnesota, the MERS has come and lobbied our legislature and just gotten a MERS statute that just says everything they do, have done is okay. And they also got a favorable decision on a certified question from the federal court to the Minnesota Supreme Court in the case of Jackson v. MERS that basically says, yeah, everything they do is fine. You can sever the note from the lien. Um, that said, I think people should be really careful about, you know, what attorneys they hire. We just had one here that got sanctioned for a lot of money and who was representing to people that he was going to be able to take care of these things. So be real careful and check into who you hire. And then the other thing I wanted to say that has to go with the IRS, you see the IRS picking on little people all the time. When these things were securitized and they put them in like these REMIC trusts, I've learned this, I've gone to continuing legal educations on this from real legitimate attorneys that have been in, involved in this, a lot of people from the South. Um, they put them in these REMIC trusts. It's my understanding from these attorneys that the nature of these trusts is such that you're not supposed to transfer these assets around once you've got them in these trusts. So essentially, it appears to be that there's massive tax fraud that has been perpetrated by these banks and maybe Goldman Sachs or whoever's been churning these things out. I actually got to talk to a uh, retired uh, partner in Goldman Sachs at a bar, kind of a friend of an uncle who basically, he designed these things and he basically acknowledged to me off the record it's just a big fraud that they would have them that they would have them certified triple a and uh you know spin them off and uh so i think that there's massive you see our little you know our doctors you know that's not for middle class person but i see people truck drivers and stuff picked on by the irs a oh lot. no 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 they they, they admit they go after little people for no reason because they can't defend themselves i mean it is it is it not only is the irs robbing people folks you're robbing innocent people and destroying families your your mojo whatever you want to call it your karma, your reap what you sow, I wouldn't want to be you. And I'm not talking about people doing something to you. I'm talking about God. I mean, I've learned one thing, folks. You do wrong, it comes back on you many fold. Um, I notice, uh, Dave, that you're sitting there pretty excited to say something you know about these cases. Thank you for the call, sir. Well, I, I have one question. I want oh, stay to there, stay there. Yeah, I have one question I want to ask Nathan if you're still in the He line. already dropped, sorry. Yeah. That, yeah. I, I'm trying to find out how much luck these bankruptcy attorneys are having doing adversarial proceedings inside of Chapter 13 because a lot of people, they try to do a Chapter 7 bankruptcy and, and you basically are just discharging and dumping all the debt. But you were you were nodding your head when you talked about a lawyer getting sanctioned in Minnesota. Uh, that was a massive case and he's still getting sanctioned. He basically was doing a lot of blanket filing of the same type of lawsuits trying to stop these foreclosures and the courts basically just hammered them. Unfortunately, the problem in Minnesota, uh, and this is, you know, there are several states that are really seriously in trouble. Michigan is one, Minnesota is one. They've given MERS a lot of latitude. Arizona, with the Cervantes case and the multi-district litigation, has given MERS a huge... So the courts are backing the fraud. A lot of what we're seeing is that the courts are siding with MERS in that the, and this is part of the problem is the borrower. The borrower went in ignorantly and signed his name to a deed of trust or mortgage and gave MERS. But a fraudulent, I'm no lawyer, but I know in, in, in all law, uh, ancient and, 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 and the more newer forms, a, 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 a something designed to deceive and to be a fraud is a null and void contract. If it can be proven, the, the the thing I have to ask the borrower when they go to the closing table, like yourself, when you went out and got a mortgage loan, did you read before you signed? Yes, but it's written in legalese, you know, uh, basically in a foreign language. I understand. Did they tell you that you could get an attorney at the time that you signed this document? No. Yeah. See, the thing is, is that Americans, because of this lack of financial education I was referring to uh, earlier in the show, uh, because of the fact that they like No, we've been raised, they we've this. been raised to be victims and to be cattle. That, that's why the big banking associations 100 years ago or more said we've got to finance the dumbing down. Yeah, well, you have to look at when you go in to sign a mortgage loan, if anything, if you know somebody that's going to be buying a house uh, at any point in time in the near future, you need to sit down. If you know about this book and you need to share it with them and tell them, look, if you go in and you see an 18 digit min number, it means that they intended to securitize your loan. That min number was on your document before you went to closing. They already had that note and that pool and everything. No, they already get it agreed to get you the loan. Now, now, to exp and they shop it around. That's how they get it. But to expand on that, you're saying more and more, you can go to title companies and others themselves. You can do an original old-fashioned system. You've just got to ask for it, right? There are good banks out there that will hold the paper, and that's the way it used to be. So, and, and the book breaks it all down. Clouded titles available right now.